Hi everybody and welcome to another episode with the Anxious Resistance. Today I'm talking about an herb and it's called ashwagandha. Okay, so what is ashwagandha? It is a species of evergreen shrub that grows in India, the Middle East, and parts of Africa. It is also known by its scientific name, Withania somnifera, if I'm saying that correctly. Common names include Indian ginseng and winter cherry. The root is often made into a powder and used in traditional Indian medicine. The purpose of this video is to investigate whether ashwagandha is a credible herbal treatment or anxiety disorders. Okay, so first off, we might want to understand how ashwagandha might work in the treatment of anxiety. So the complete mechanism of action for ashwagandha is unknown. However, for the treatment of anxiety, it is thought that ashwagandha enhances GABA, which is a neurotransmitter, and it is one of the brain's primary inhibitory neurotransmitters, so it slows things down. Increased GABA helps create a feeling of calm, and decreases anxiety. Ashwagandha may aid in the binding of GABA to the neuron, increasing the efficiency of its function. It is also thought that ashwagandha may also regulate serotonin in the brain. Serotonin is one of the neurotransmitters primarily responsible for mood. Increased serotonin has been tied to a decrease in depression and anxiety symptoms. Okay, so what evidence is there that ashwagandha can be used in this manner? I'm going to go through some articles that I found and that have concluded that there is some use for ashwagandha for this purpose. The first article states, The findings of this review are promising. Ashwagandha is an extremely useful resource for the treatment of depression, but the study also found that there is still a lack of evidence supporting the use and effectiveness of ashwagandha. This article also states the results of this literature review suggest some promising findings about ashwagandha being an extremely useful resource for depression, but the study also found that there is still a lack of evidence to support the use and effectiveness of ashwagandha, especially in major depressive disorders. The main reason to consider using ashwagandha as an antidepressant are the phytochemicals and nutrients found in the root of the herb. Moreover, chemicals like alkaloids and lactones, collectively known as withanolides, play a major role as antidepressants. Pharmacological studies have confirmed that plant preparations of ashwagandha have anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-cancer, anxiolytic, and immunomodulary effects. Okay. So article number two that I've got here concludes that all five studies concluded that ashwagandha intervention resulted in greater score improvements significantly in most cases than placebo in outcomes and on anxiety or stress scales. Current evidence should be received with caution because of an assortment of study methods in cases of potential bias. So that's saying the, the articles that they reviewed for their study may have had some bias and may not have had the strongest study methods. So some of this stuff you have to take a little bit with a grain of salt. Article number three concludes ashwagandha root extract is a natural compound with sleep inducing potential. It is well tolerated and improves sleep quality and sleep onset latency in patients with insomnia at a dose of 300 milligrams extract twice daily. It could be of potential use to improve sleep parameters in patients with insomnia and anxiety, but this needs further large scale studies. Article number four, and again, all these articles will be in the full article on our website, which will be linked in the description below. Article number four concludes, this is the first clinical study assessing ashwagandha for its safety and efficacy. Treatment with one ashwagandha capsule once daily for 90 days improved memory and focus, psychological well-being, and sleep quality. Reduced stress levels and was safe and well tolerated. Article number five. It is confirmed that ashwagandha produced mild adverse effects among patients in different studies and resulted in improved measure of anxiety levels. It cites, however, that the studies had flawed methodology and failed to achieve low risk of bias ratings. Okay, so there is some evidence that this works. Some of it is done with articles that aren't necessarily well done or have effective methodology. So some of this you may have to take with a grain of salt. And some of it, you know, when it comes to things like these herbal remedies, ashwagandha is cheap and maybe something that you just want to try and see how it goes for you. So in that case, how do you dose ashwagandha? Doses can range from 250 milligrams up to 12,000 milligrams. 
which is 12 grams per day. With this kind of supplement, it is best to start low and raise the dose slowly over time until achieving the desired effect. Do not take more than is necessary to treat your symptoms because if you do, you may end up with a lot of side effects. It may be best to use ashwagandha with the supervision of a doctor or other medical prescriber. So what are some potential side effects that you could have with ashwagandha? They include diarrhea, headache, sedation, or nausea. Ashwagandha should not be used during pregnancy or while breastfeeding. Somnolence, which is excessive tiredness, diarrhea, stomach pain, and abdominal pain have been more commonly reported with ashwagandha use. So overall, what are some positives or pros of ashwagandha? It is an established treatment in traditional Indian medicine. It is cheap and easy to get online. So this is something that you can easily try, you can easily get for yourself, and see if it works, help relieve some of your symptoms. So what are some negatives or cons of ashwagandha? The evidence behind its effectiveness is inconclusive. It may be hard to find a supplement that is of excellent quality and has pure ingredients. So you wanna make sure you do your research when you're looking for an ashwagandha supplement. We do recommend a specific ashwagandha supplement which will be linked in the description down below and also in the article found on our website. So our overall take of ashwagandha is that this is one herbal remedy that has been around for a long time. The conventional wisdom says that it is effective for anxiety, but the jury is still out in the court of modern medicine. It may or may not improve your symptoms. There are a whole lot of other treatments with more established safety, tolerability, and efficacy than ashwagandha. Ashwagandha should be considered a treatment of last resort, or it should only be considered in cases of mild anxiety where symptoms are subclinical. Subclinical would mean that the symptoms do not qualify someone for an anxiety disorder as outlined by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, otherwise known as the DSM-5. If you think that ashwagandha may be an effective treatment option for you, then it is best to choose a supplement from a high quality source. Start your dosage low and raise it over time. This will help you to limit any side effects you may experience. Always be cautious and use reliable information when using herbal supplements. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, subscribe to our channel if you want more, and thanks so much for watching.